Hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel, All Things Taylor with yours truly. Um, I figured it was way overdue to do a Taylor Hendricks vlog. Uh, I think I should be doing a lot more of those and kind of keeping you guys up to speed with what's going on in the world of Taylor. Um, you know, a brief look behind the curtains that doesn't necessarily have anything to do with pro wrestling. <laughs> So as promised, I wanted to give you guys an update on why I unintentionally missed Q&A Wednesday yesterday. My day was crazy, like one for the books for sure. Um, <clears throat> it was so much so that I wish I would have done a better job with documenting it because it was just such a crazy experience that was just so unexpected. So yesterday I was in my normal routine working with two bigger dogs on food manners, you know, when they're eating, how to not be aggressive and how to eliminate any sort of alpha behavior when it comes to an alpha trying to prioritize food for themselves so they can protect the pack, so forth and so on. So basic just, you know, food manners for animals in groups, right? <laughs> and so when that was done, I was walking uh, back to where I needed to go and I had all my stuff with me and just something caught my eye. There was just something out of the norm. I can't explain what it was. Maybe it was a sixth sense. I don't know. Um, <clears throat> but there was all these hawks, which isn't, um, it, which isn't atypical. You know, we have hawks and sometimes the eagles and uh, crows and all kinds of other birds all the time, all the time. <laughs> There's a lot of really cool wildlife out here from owls to lizards and jackrabbits and all kinds of really cool, really, really cool animals, right? So <laughs> something caught my eye and I guess curiosity got the best of me and I was like, I need to see why these crows are so interested in this one area. It was like a grassy sort of knoll sort of, you know, area that's virtually undisturbed by humans, just mostly animals go over there. And... <laughs> so I started making my way over there out of curiosity and I saw an eagle dive at the ground and then quickly go back up into the tree line. And I'm like, okay, it has to be after something. Cur curiosity, I don't want to walk away, even though maybe I should, I don't know. Uh, but long, you know, long story short, I did go over to check it out and inside the grass, I found an owl, <laughs> a wild owl chilling in the grass and clearly something was wrong and um you know I'm not a, I'm not a person that does like falconing or, or whatever that's called I don't have long protective gloves with me I'm just Taylor Hendricks with a little fleece jacket on and sunglasses after you know training some dogs <laughs> I'm like what do I do with my hands? I don't know. And so I'm all alone and I'm trying to figure out how best to make sure that this poor owl doesn't end up food for another animal. Because what crows and stuff like to do, they may be smaller, but they are very good at working in groups to get other animals. Um, and so what I, um, what I tried to do was, I didn't even know how precarious a situation this was because I was not educated in sort of, you know, aviary animals such as owls. So I didn't really know what to expect or what I was doing would end up being very ballsy. I had no idea. Like to me, I was just like, okay, well, this is just another day in the life that is so random of Taylor Hendricks, right? Yay. <laughs> so um, I took off my fleece Columbia jacket or whatever, and I tried to uh, cover the owl so I could get a better grasp on the situation. You know, I was like, was it from a nest? Did it fall? I was like, well, it's clearly not a baby, but I don't know if it's a full grown mature adult. I don't know. I don't really know what the situation is, but there's still crows all around. So I immediately start thinking Alfred Hitchcock's The Birds. And I'm like, I gotta protect my eyeballs. So I put my sunglasses on. I'm just in an archer t-shirt and I have my, my fleece Columbia jacket and I'm trying to swaddle or cover this poor owl that's clearly in the grass and somewhat defenseless. And it has no idea who I am. It doesn't know that I'm trying to help, even though I'm using like my calmest, most soothing t Taylor Hendrick voice, like, hey, you're gonna be okay. I'll be your mama now. <laughs> Little things like this, right? And then it tries to fly away. So <laughs> what I noticed was it got about 20 feet away from me in the direction of the road. And I'm like, okay, this just went from one bad situation to another locale that is equally as bad a situation for both me and the owl. And so <laughs> the other thing I noticed, the second thing, was that it never got more than four feet off the ground when it flew the 20 feet to the fence where the road was. And I was like, okay, the traffic goes pretty fast, even though there's a speed limit over there, that's not going to end very well. So then I go all the way over there and I try to do the same thing, but get a better grasp with my jacket. And I notice how big the beak 
this hooked black beak and these really hooked black talons that are really thick and I'm like ooh those can do some damage to me and I am unprotected all right well let's get a tighter swaddle on this poor owl without hurting her wings or anything like that um, and then I get a good hold on her so I'm walking back towards the gate to kind of get out of the open grassy tree lined area where all of these hawks are like hmm. <laughs> little evil little laying in wait sort of birds right and I can see them they're they're floating they're hovering over they're trying to figure out where I'm taking their delicious meal or whatever and so I get over to the gate and the owl escapes my grasp again and this time flies into a more open area that's just outside of the tree line and didn't get over three feet this time and it was the perfect area for the crows unfortunately and the crows just came swarming as soon as the owl landed and so I come running with my black <laughs> Columbia zip up and I'm waving it at the birds to scare the, the crows away. And anybody who, who owns black chickens will know. Um, and for those of you who don't know anything about that, um, black chickens, they're called Ostralorps. And I think I'm saying that right. Uh, they from the ground, from the air, look like crows and ravens. So they're a deterrent for hawks and other crows. And so you have basically a built in defense system just because um, crows and ravens and hawks, they love chickens. So if you have those black ones, they look like the predator from above. So it's actually a deterrent. So I tried to use my jacket, making it look like another bigger black uh, bird. And it worked, they went scattering away into the trees and I quickly dropped it like a tarp over the her owl. And I swallowed it super tight, but you know, gently like you would a baby. So they, they're, you know, snuggly. And I was able to get her wings down and everything. So she was pretty much just like this, huddled under my jacket. I have all of her talons covered, her beak covered and everything. And then I end up finding, <coughs> I had this strategy and I thought to myself, I had a sneaking suspicion that something was in fact wrong because she wasn't really able to defend herself that well. And I noticed she never got over four feet. You know, she only got, a, a, she only got about four feet or less. So I was like, well, there has to be something wrong. And I have a sneaking suspicion that if she can't fly very high, then that must mean there's something wrong with one of her wings or both, you know, something to that effect. So my thought process was, okay, well, I need to get some research because I don't know what they eat. I don't know exactly what could be wrong and I don't know what to do. So I get it, um, this really awesome dog crate that has a dual purpose and I've used that crate for puppies and for piglets and so forth. So it's a very good multi-functioning uh, crate. And what I loved about this crate is it has a darkened area to kind of help them prevent sensory overload so they're not getting overly stimulated from things going on in the environment. But there's also spots that are open in the sense that they can see out and get nice airflow and so they can see what's going on so they can see but also relax in the back part. Very, very great. It's it's very, very good tool. Money well spent. Um, <clears throat> And the reason why I chose a smaller crate, because I have much bigger ones that are fully open and everything like that, that have double and triple access. Very, very uh, good tools that I've had. The reason why I chose the smaller one for her was because I felt like if there was something wrong with one or both of her wings, I didn't want her trying to use her wings. So I want to kind of restrict her movement, almost like what you would do if you put your arm in a sling or a cast, that sort of thing. But obviously not being a veterinarian, not having access to one at that point. And, you know, I don't think, if, you know, how, how am I really going to transport it? an owl to the vet to get seen and you know I don't know if every veterinarian has experience with owls because you know I think you have to be licensed in order to have them as pets so it's just very very you know a precarious sort of thing right and so that was my thought process I wanted to restrict her being able to use her wings and I said her just because her personality came off very like female and um and so I wanted her to rest rest that wing until we could get a better idea of what was going on with her you know and kind of make keep her safe and calm and so I did some research and I, you know, I put some hay in the bottom of the crate before I put her in so she had something to nest because certain owl uh, breeds actually are nesting animals. And I was going through Google looking up every sort of breed of owl until I found pictures that kind of somewhat looked like her and um, figured out that they are very carnivorous animals. They eat a lot and the smaller owls apparently eat even more because they have even faster metabolisms than the bigger ones who already eat a lot. And so they eat things like rats and rabbits and 
lizards and other amphibians and may, some, some of them even eat like smaller cats and possums and things of that nature. Um, fish and, and mice and sometimes snakes even. So <clears throat> what I was able to do is give her quite a few hours to rest and check up on her and I was able to use some tongs and like put inside through the, the door which is like a slatted door um, some like uh, chicken uh, livers, chicken feet and some other raw materials that she would have probably procured um, had she had been out in the wild and not injured. Um, the other thing that came to mind was whether or not she's a, a boy or a girl, there is obviously, you know, a possibility that she might have a nest somewhere with babies. So I have to get her um, as healthy as possible so she can get back to those babies because if I don't, those babies don't have a parent and therefore they don't know how to get their own food and so forth if they haven't been taught that yet. So there was a lot of things going on. I had to look up the diet of the owl, potentially what kind of owl, what could have happened. And so I end up, my educated guess based on the hours that I spent on Google yesterday was that I think she's a burrowing sort of owl, which means that they live in the ground a lot in um, holes and stuff that are from like gophers and things like that that also burrow into the ground. Um, and I mean, she was in the grass, but I went back to that area after looking up all this information and I could not find a burrow. So I do not think that she actually lived in the ground over there. I think that maybe she was attacked. Um, but yeah, they're not, it's not uncommon apparently for them to be out during the daytime. Cause I thought that was weird because I thought all owls were nocturnal, but, um, I guess I was wrong, but I was able to get her to eat and I had her for a good eight or nine hours yesterday. And I decided to try to see if that was long enough for her to kind of rest and kind of get better. And I also learned that apparently owls don't need a lot of water because they get their water from whatever food they've eaten. So whatever animal they get their, their, their fluids from that animal. But um, I did put out water just in case anyway, because I didn't know how long ago she'd eaten. And I also had no guarantee of knowing if she would eat the food that I gave her. Well, she did. She was extremely grateful, even though she didn't show it. And I ended up saying that she was a she, just a guess. And what I didn't, I thought this was really cute. She was going like, and it makes like a popping noise. It almost reminded me of popping like bubble wrap. So I called her Poppy. I was like, you are Poppy and I am your mommy. <laughs> and so I mothered her for, you know, close to nine hours yesterday off and on checking in on her fluids and her food to make sure she ate and relaxed and kind of checked on her behavior and come to find out that um, I knew obviously the posturing of her wings was you know meant to be a deterrent she was trying to intimidate me because she was scared well the thing that I thought that was endearing about her little pop pops to me and I was like I'm just gonna pretend like you're blowing me kisses well apparently that was also a defense mechanism but I'm still gonna say that it was just cute because she loved me uh, <laughs> and so really late last night when a lot of the bird activity had sort of died down and this is the one thing I regret because I didn't get it on camera. I was too slow. Um, we, we, I brought, I had, uh, I had some help and we brought out the crate into the big open area from where I first found her so she could have some sort of familiar, familiarity. And I opened the crate and tilted the crate and kind of got her to kind of realize, oh, okay, I can possibly leave now because the door is open. And she flew and she flew right out of there, flew up super high, up past the tree line. It was like up, up and away. And it was amazing. It was so amazing. I wish I would have gotten on camera. It was so beautiful. Her wings were fully spread. She was up over 20 feet in the air. It was beautiful. And she went past the first tree line. Uh, over the road, past the second tree line. It was beautiful. So um, it was just such a, a crazy, I almost feel like it was like a once in a lifetime experience because I don't know anyone that, you know, can say, you know, they helped like rescue and rehabilitate an owl, a wild owl. It was so bizarre and unexpected, you know. I was just going about my normal Taylor Hendricks day working with animals and and then I was supposed to do Q&A Wednesday with you guys and I had a bunch of articles for Fightful to write and all this other stuff to do but then all of a sudden this owl came into my life and needed help and so that just it was an amazing experience so poppy girl I love you <laughs> it was such a cool experience I couldn't wait to share with you guys I will create a post on here um, I don't know what you call them other than like a written post and I'll try to put a couple of the pictures that I got of her when she was in the crate um, I didn't get a lot of footage because I was more so just focused on, you know, trying to figure out what to do with her and 
how to assess, you know, if she was okay and what to do and obviously like what kind of owl she was and what kind of diet she would need and so forth. So that was more of my focus. So I wish I would have gotten more footage and stuff, especially of her flying away. It was amazing. It was like a, like an inspirational photo with her wings fully flapped in the night and all that. It was just the perfect photo op that I wish I would have gotten it. <laughs> It was so amazing. So cheers to Poppy. Um, I'm pretty sure she got back to wherever she needed to go. It was beautiful. Um, so yay. that was my day yesterday. This is the most recent Taylor Hendricks vlog. Make sure you tell your friends to check out my channel, like, comment, subscribe, and be ready for Q&A Wednesday in just a little bit.